This video introduces the Kolmogorov Smirnov test, often just called the KS test. It's the first of the non parametric tests that we'll cover in this course. So, non parametric tests don't require that the data follow a normal distribution. The previous tests, like the T test, ANOVA, the F test, are all parametric tests because they have that assumption of normality. So, before discussing the KS test, we need to cover something called a a cumulative distribution function, or a CDF. Basically, a CDF, shown on the right here, indicates the probability of a variable being less than or equal to a specified value. So in, this, in the CDF, shown on the right, the horizontal dashed line indicates a probability of 50%, or 0 0.5. If we read down from where the function meets that line, it shows that 50% of the values in the data set are less than 0. So the corresponding probability density function, shown on the left, um, makes, corroborates that, in which there is less than, or which half the area is indeed less than zero. So the cumulative distribution function is just essentially an integral of the PDF evaluated from negative infinity to whatever value x. So back to the KS test. Its purpose is generally to test for differences in the shape between two sample distributions. It can also be used to compare one sample to a known statistical distribution, but we're not going to really focus on that as much as the two-sample test. So the test compares the overall shape of the distribution. It doesn't specifically test for differences in central tendency or dispersion, although those are part of what affects the overall shape of the distribution. So the test, in R at least, requires univariate continuous data, and the null hypothesis for the two-sample test is that the two samples were drawn from populations with the same distribution. They should have the same cumulative distribution function. So the test statistic, given the term D, is, is quite simple. It's really simple, actually. It's just the maximum absolute difference between the two cumulative distribution functions. So at whatever point those two functions are furthest apart, that distance in the probability is the statistic d. So if the null hypothesis is true, and they do in fact come from the, a population with the same distribution, d should technically be zero. Of course, in reality, the two samples are randomly taken from their population, so even if the population is the same, it's, they should differ somewhat. So we need to know the p-value, the probability of observing a d statistic at least as large as what we found, if the null hypothesis is true. So Kolmogorov, when he came up with the test, um, calculated that expected distribution of d if the null hypothesis is true. I won't go into the details of, of how he did it or what it is. But basically, the p-value is obtained by finding the area under the expected distribution for values at least as extreme as the observed d statistic. So the R function for a two-sample KS test is called KS.test, and it requires two numeric vectors separated by a comma as the input. So you sample one, numeric vector, and sample two is a numeric vector. So the output looks like this. It gives you the D statistic and, and the p-value. Uh, you may also get this warning message at the bottom, um, which comes up if the sample has at, at least some values that are exactly the same. These are ties, right? If, if they both, if one of the data sets has the value 12 three times, that's a tie. Um, so in this case, R can't compute the exact p-value, so it just estimates the p-value from a distribution that approximates the true null expectation. There's not much you can do about this. I mean, your data is what the data is. Um, so you pretty much just have to ignore the warning. The p-value will pretty much be fine, um, as long as you only have a few duplicate values. If you have a lot of them, if you have many, many duplicate values, many ties in your data, you should probably be more cautious and read into this a little bit more. So when reporting the KS test results, make sure to give the name of the test that you did, the test statistic D, and the p-value.